Hi gang, so the lore of Warhammer 40k is huge. The grim darkness of the 41st millennium is relayed to us in hundreds of books published by its creator, Games Workshop, and its licensees, covering genetically engineered super soldiers, perfidious alien species, and horrific demons from beyond. So where do you even start? Where do you get all that information, and how do you know it's the right information? Well, well, here, in this video, I'm going to do a really broad overview of the main themes of 40k, and then take a look at the best places to find out about it, be they novels, rule books, or idiots on the internet like me. Warhammer 40k is set in a dystopian science fantasy universe created by Games Workshop. It's a grim and brutal setting where humanity is locked in a never-ending war against various alien races, cosmic horrors and malevolent supernatural forces, and there's loads of it. And that can be difficult for a newcomer, so in this video I'm going to try and do a few things. First, to go through some of the main themes and ideas in 40k, so you can understand why it's written the way it is, because 40k in tone is quite different to a lot of other sci-fi franchises, and then go through the best places to actually get the lore, and give some tips and tricks to tell the real stuff from the fan theory. So first, why is 40k lore so big, so much bigger than almost any other franchise or IP? Well, partly it's because 40k was originally written as a setting, not as a story. The setting for a tabletop game. There is no main character or original trilogy of books or movies that this all grew out of. Instead, it was written as a kind of sandbox for people to tell their own stories in. Originally to provide a bit of background for people's games of Warhammer. Those games went through various different editions over 35 years, each of which added a bit more backstory, and at the same time hundreds of novels, short stories, video games, and other products were written in that shared world. The whole universe of 40k is designed to be really really big and to hold within it any sort of story the players might want to tell, from action-packed battles to tense detective novels. It's a complex and very rich and varied world created by loads of different writers over decades and written in many different styles. But despite all that variety, there are a number of common themes to Warhammer 40k and it might be useful to take them into account when you're first diving into all that lore. The first one that you will hear everywhere is Grim Dark. Warhammer 40k is ridiculously, comedically bleak. It's a universe where horrific atrocities are committed daily, where innumerable millions of people lose their lives in galaxy-spanning war zones, and where every single faction is generally terrible, but for different reasons. It's designed as the setting for a war game, where all the factions are fighting all the time, and Games Workshop have always presented those wars as ultimately a bad thing. In the lore, even the wars of survival are usually framed as being avoidable, and any glorious heroism is usually some sort of in-world propaganda. All that constant warfare is then twinned with a regressive look at the future. For all its sci-fi trappings, the universe of 40k especially the Imperium of Man, the protagonist, is a regressive sci-fi setting. Most people's lives in this universe are spent as near peasants or factory drones, the depictions of their life much more similar to people from our past rather than people from our future. Their lives are dictated by feudal custom, dogmatic religion, and ancient inviolable tradition that are inescapable for most people, and that's before we get to the threat of ancient demons. Even the Xenos species of the galaxy, the aliens in this setting, are more like races from a fantasy novel. That's how they started out. Elves and orcs whose societies are just as traditionalist or inescapable as the human one. So the darkness of this universe constantly at war is made grim by the fact that it's inescapable for everyone, and the things that make it inescapable 
are usually reinforced by its terrible occupants, who couldn't imagine a world where anything was different. Warhammer characters frequently have to battle not just the enemy, but their own hidebound or obstructive systems. Writing heroic protagonists in that setting can be difficult. Many of the main characters of Warhammer operate on a much smaller scale. They're cogs in the machine rather than the big leaders. The stakes in a Warhammer story tend to revolve around a single battle or a single campaign or a single world, and on that much more human scale, the characters can then care about their their own survival or the survival of their comrades and loved ones, revealing a mystery or completing a task that needs doing. All stuff that's a bit more universal and relatable to the audience. The main characters of Warhammer stories are rarely the godlike super powerful beings, they're the people standing to the side of them. The sacrifices that these people might be forced to make in the story are rarely shown without a moral judgement. A really common theme in Warhammer is seeing how far a character will go to stick to to their beliefs, with the inevitable result being their downfall, their casting out, or their corruption to chaos. No one can ever really win. But all this edgy, dark seriousness is leavened by the fact that Warhammer 40k is also over the top and deliberately really silly, full of black humour and satirical references to our world. On the simplest level, the writers of Warhammer have always had a lot of fun folding in tropes and references to real world things, even really silly real world things. The colossal size of the 40k universe means the writers, if they want, can write World War I trench soldiers fighting anime mecha, super elite snipers against demons from hell, or fold in stuff they just thought would be funny to include. Want Rambo in 40k? Yep, that exists. You've got a faction of ancient robot skeletons trying to conquer the galaxy? Well, let's portray them as bickering colleagues complaining about the old days and trying to one-up each other. What about the species developed as a super weapon who only enjoy fighting? Right, they're going to be comedy slapstick football hooligans. The fact that in 40k the scale of everything is turned up to 11 makes it absurd and 40k then really leans in to that absurdity. And one of the other ways you can use absurdity is as satire. This absurdity of scale allows the setting to satirise by exaggeration plenty of things from everyday life. Organised religion, bureaucratic, uncaring, inefficient governments, blind tradition, bigotry and hatred are all regular targets of Warhammer 40k stories as the Imperium repeatedly, hilariously shoots itself in the foot. And this weirdly allows the setting to feel a lot more real than you'd expect. The huge Hugely destructive wars are often motivated by very human failings, like greed or competition for status, honour, religion and tradition. Every decision has a million unexpected outcomes and moral grey areas. No one totally wins. Victories are usually incredibly costly in some way. And if you've ever worked in a big organisation, it's surprisingly easy to understand how all of that might happen, how plausible it all feels. This isn't a fantasy world where a noble superhero wins the day over the forces of darkness. That sort of stuff feels almost childishly naive compared to 40k. The colossal scale of Warhammer, its hidebound institutions and its petty human failings make it surprisingly relatable even if it is absurdly over the top all the time. And all of that means that Warhammer lore has a few problems for the new reader. First, it's basically impossible to have read everything, and with the number of different authors writing in the world, the lore occasionally, often, contradicts itself. The galaxy of Warhammer is so huge that human populations are often isolated by their distance from each other. Society might work very differently in one part of the galaxy than in another, and news travels really slow, so conflicting accounts are often written off as unreliable narrators or third-hand gossip. The books are full of weird little stories and threads that are left deliberately hanging and then are never resolved, either to create a sense of a wide, mysterious universe or to allow the players and modellers some freedom in creating their own things. Nothing is ever neatly wrapped up, and that means that a colossal amount of the fan content out there, the conversation that happens on the internet, is theories. 
head cannon as people come up with ways to try and make it all make sense. And this gives us our central problem. Where do you start if you want to read 40k law? There are basically four places people find this stuff. The first is game books, the rule books and supplements that come with the various tabletop and role-playing games, but those are dwarfed by the number of novels, the hundreds of full-length and short stories published by Games Workshop's publishing arm, the Black Library. Once you move away from those official sources, there are a few wikis out there, aggregated sources of all the law combined. This is where it starts to get a bit dicey, as some of those are much more reliable than others. And then finally, you end up with us, content creators. There are loads of people on all sorts of platforms who explain the law, but as you can imagine, some are more reliable than others. We'll go through how to spot the best ones, and I'll put a few of my recommendations in the thing below. The game books are sometimes, unfortunately, the best place to start. The core rule books for Warhammer 40k, or its sister games, or the role-playing games set in the same universe, are about the only place you find a published, official introduction to the whole world. Almost all the core rule books spend a good amount of time explaining the history of the universe, the role and structure of factions like the Imperial the most recent events, and how things like the Warp, Psychers, Chaos, and Xenos all play into it, along with giving a broad overview of all the main factions. The Codex and Army books, books that give you the rules for one specific faction, do the same thing, including a broad overview on the history, structures, politics, and priorities of each of those factions. And usually all of that is mixed in with some atmospheric short story sections. What's unfortunate is that if you want to get into the lore, but you don't play the game, this isn't much use. No one wants to spend 30 to 50 pounds on a book for a game they don't play, hence the popularity of wikis or YouTube. But generally, if you want to read the real official overview of what the universe of Warhammer 40k is about, then the rule books are about the only place you can do that. These broad overviews are then supplemented by the novels. Black Library, Games Workshop's publishing arm, have been publishing novels set in the 40k universe since the late 80s, and they're pretty much all still available as ebooks, and the more recent ones are usually in print as physical books. Again, there's no first novel or linear order to these. There are hundreds of novels, some standalone, some sorted into trilogies, some part of a much longer series. All those feature their own cast of characters, from the very highest down to the very lowest, and explore some area of the universe. Some books concern themselves with the great big main events of the galaxy, usually from the point of view of one or two side characters, but most of the books are just things that happened in the long history of 40k. For example, the Gaunt's Ghost series is a Band of Brothers style wartime journal charting this one regiment as they fight as part of a giant crusade, but that crusade was just a drop in the ocean at the time. It doesn't really affect many of the other books outside that series. On the other hand, the Dark Imperium trilogy follows one of the most prominent characters of the entire setting, Robute Gilliman, as he fights a decade-long war against one of the main villains, Mortarion. But again, while that will give you a top-down look at the Imperium, it's not going to go into much detail about any of the other factions, or really anything beyond that campaign. And there are loads of variations of this all the way down to detective novels that deal with one case on one planet. If you want a list of what I think are the best places to start, then I've got a video up here for that. But generally, if the rule books are meant to give you the really, really big picture, then the novels give you the little one. They throw you right into the action, and all of them add something, do a little bit of world building. While we're here, I'll also roll video games in. You can learn a lot from playing through a video game, but it's still essentially one story in a universe of thousands of such stories. Another novel to add to the pile. Okay, beyond this, you end up with all the fan-created stuff. So we should probably have a quick pause here to talk about canon. Again, I've got a whole video on this, but the general rule is that everything with an official logo on it is considered canon forever, even if it contradicts something else. If two sources give contradicting information, they're both right, or they're both not, or they're differing accounts told by different people in the world, or badly translated news, or just warp magic. There's no differing timelines or reboots. It just all happened, and if the reports are different, well, well, they might be wrong. Out of all those hundreds of books, there are only four that have ever been declared to not count anymore. 
and even those occasionally come back up. So next up is the wikis. There are two main Warhammer 40k wikis, the Fandom Wiki at warhammer40k.fandom.com and Lexicanum. The Fandom Wiki is the one that often comes up first in most searches. It's a massive resource with loads of information on almost every subject, a lot of which is copied verbatim from the books. But it does have a habit of adding in loads of irrelevant stuff to pad out all the articles. So wading through it for information that's actually relevant can be a bit of a chore. Also, while it lists its sources, there's no proper wiki style attribution. So you can't actually find out where each individual bit of information came from, or if it was just made up to bridge a gap in differing accounts of the law. So while it's pretty good, it isn't the most reliable of sources. By far, the superior wiki is Lexicanum, named after a specific rank of Space Marine Librarian in World. Lexicanum articles tend to be written a bit more like actual Wikipedia. They're more of a summary of the events. They don't tend to be blocks of text copied straight from the books. And every piece of information added is properly referenced to a publication, in some cases right down to the paragraph number, with citation needed tags for stuff that has not been attributed properly, so it's by far the more reliable. Lexicanum is something I use to make videos loads, because if I vaguely remember something from a book somewhere, I can go and check I'm right and find where I might have read that before. Lexicanum also translates to French and German and has similar branches for Age of Sigmar and Warhammer Fantasy. Also in this sort of world is the 40k lore subreddit, which is really popular. It's a little variable in quality. It's pretty good if you have a simple question, but it's also rife with fan theories and obviously it's Reddit, so arguments about minor details can spiral into massive long things. But it does have a really good community of users with massive brains and apparently photographic memories, or at least very good use of the search function, who will often answer questions by posting the relevant excerpt direct from the books, which can be really handy if you've heard about something but don't know if it's actually real or not. And then finally we come to where a lot of people do find their intro to 40k, content creators. There are a ton of YouTubers, podcasters, article writers, and short form TikTok and Instagram creators who've built a channel on explaining 40k's massive complex lore. You can find loads of variety here, loads of different delivery styles depending on your preference. Some are short form summaries, some, especially YouTube and podcast content, is in the form of really long scripted videos, multiple hours. Um, if that seems ridiculous, it's because people like to have something on in the background while they're painting. Obviously the quality of this is really variable. Nobody is checking or verifying anything a content creator says, and content creators do have a vested interest in getting you to click on the thumbnail, which means they have a vested interest in making everything sound either way more important or way simpler than it really is. There are way too many to go through here. I've listed my favourites down in the description, but generally there are a few things I tend to watch out for that might be useful. First, uh, if you're a new player I'd avoid anything with the word theories in it. If you're just getting into the lore then the last thing you need is people's personal headcanon. There are a few channels based on either personal theories or on rumours that I generally just steer clear of if you're new. It's gonna get confusing. Second, as we mentioned, Warhammer lore often exist in a sort of perpetual grey area. No story is ever completely finished. Nobody is the good guy or the bad guy. The galaxy is vast and operates in a million different ways. There are no simple power levels or concrete answers. The beauty of the setting is in exactly how massive and complex it is. So for this reason, my main point regarding YouTube is to avoid hyperbole which I realise is a silly thing to say about YouTube. The most powerful this, the biggest that, the eight strongest whatever, the real true reason for this. For me, those sort of titles tend to show that the author is about to massively oversimplify the universe. Nothing in 40k is ever as simple as who's the strongest or what one thing will explain everything. With 40k law channels, I think it's best to keep it simple. If you want to know about the background of Space Marines, go for the videos that just say that, not the ones called you won't believe the 10 strongest space marines. Third, and probably the least important, 
I tend to steer clear of the more meme comedy channels. 40K is really deliberately humorous, we've said that earlier. It's bleak and self-referential and satirical and silly, but most of that humor is in the form of like knowing nods to real world things. Inside the world, everyone takes everything completely seriously. But content creator humor tends to go down more of the college bro dick joke route and often makes fun of 40k for like being stupid, which is kind of missing the point. The annoying downside of this is that the 40k internet is full of memes that people think are based on real lore, but actually aren't. They're based on a fandom joke or something, and you end up bumping into people who genuinely think things that have never been written down by anyone. And that only makes it more confusing if you're new. Look, you might enjoy those channels a lot more than I do. You might find it an easy way in, which is great. But if you want to find out what 40k law actually is, I probably wouldn't rely on people who are mostly making fun of it. It can be quite misleading sometimes. And then finally, how to say this. The satire of 40k either doesn't land with some people or is deliberately ignored with some people because they like the idea that everything's bleak and dark and edgy. And those people might have a tendency to make lore videos as a way of spreading some really horrible ideas. This is of course the case in a number of different fandoms. It's not just a Warhammer thing, but there have been the occasional content creator whose channels have been shut down over making videos that were, let's say, not very welcoming to the fan base. Anyway, you know, just be aware of that. So there, if you're just getting into 40k lore and you're trying to vaguely attempt to make sense of it all, hopefully that will help. It's an incredibly rich universe, but it isn't as much of a polished product as some other universes. It's written by a load of people having fun. The secret to engaging with it is accepting the fact that, just like in the real world, you can't know everything, you can't read all of it, and often it's just not going to make sense. You just have to go with it anyway. It's loads of fun. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to hear more about the lore of 40k, there should be a video coming up there on the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, there's the usual Patreon link below where you can get early access to videos, vote on book clubs, or join the Discord. If you want to contribute to my collection of unpainted models, there's an affiliate link for Firestorm Games in the description. And otherwise, you can do the YouTube stuff and click all the likey buttons. See ya!